Many Christians get very upset when they feel like God is far away, and yet they ignore what the Bible tells us about fellowship with God. 1 John chapter 1 tells us that if we're in sin, we are not in fellowship with God. It's simple as that. So we need to practice repentance, which means we need to understand what God calls sin. We need to confess it and repent of it, and God is just and faithful to forgive us. Our first response when we are far from God should be prayer. More specifically, prayer that God would show us the sin in our lives that we need to repent of. We often want a feel-good version of the gospel, but the first step of Jesus' message was repent. God is a holy God and is utterly intolerant of sin. If we attempt to approach his throne, the first thing his light shines on is our imperfection, our sin. We have many options on how to deal with that sin, but the only right way is to confess it to God and repent. Confession and repentance is a way in which we can start to live in God's light. It's our first step to fellowship with him. Romans chapter 6 tells us plainly that we're either slaves to sin or slaves to God. It's also very clear in verse 23 that we're going to get our due wages one way or another. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we do not accept the truth, it's still true. If you slip on concrete, it's very intolerant of your feelings. It's going to hurt. Living in the light is difficult. It's hard to look at the messes we make and own them. But sooner or later, we will get what we have worked towards. Repentance is when we see that we're headed down the path for death and we reverse course. Repentance literally means to turn around, to go the other way. It seems like a pretty good idea if the path you're on is headed off a cliff. We can only recognize where we're headed if we recognize that God created the truth and it's good. Repentance starts in Genesis, just like everything else. God spoke things into existence. He named things into being. Then he taught Adam what they were called. Then God taught Adam how to name things. What we call things is very important, and it's especially important with sin. It isn't a mistake. It wasn't a lapse in judgment. It wasn't innocent. Stop trying to paint yourself in a better light. If God calls it sin, it's sin. So the very first step in repenting is calling out your sin. It's like a junk drawer. It's going to be a mess when you start repenting, but just pull something out you recognize, name it, confess it to God as sin. Easy ones are anger, anxiety, bitterness, and then just wash, rinse, and repeat. 1 John 1.8 says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The first step of repentance is to stop de deceiving yourself. Learn what God calls sin and confess it. Heavenly Father, reveal my heart so that I can live in the light. It's as simple as that. God disciplines his children, and the fact that you feel far from God is an indication that he's trying to get your attention. There are many sins we have that separate us from God. Anger, anxiety, bitterness, sexual immorality. But once we confess and repent, God's faithful and just to forgive. In 1 John 1, 7, it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus' Son cleanses us from all sin. In verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God wants us to know where we stand with him and to be in fellowship with him and each other. It really is that black and white. We can choose the path of confession and repentance or to walk in darkness with God's word not dwelling in us. This is not just for new believers, although that's often the most drastic change. We accumulate sin daily, and the sooner we confess it, the sooner we can restore fellowship with God. We need to confess sin regularly. Daily is a good place to start. Do you really think you can make it a whole day without doing something you need to confess? I'm really curious as to how many professing Christians are also confessing Christians. Seriously, we tend to think of sins as big things, big hurts, something really immoral. We adopt a worldly view of sin and hurting others. But we aren't called to use the world's standard. We're called to use God's. We need to call sin what God calls it. This means that sometimes you should apologize for something other people wouldn't. And sometimes it means not apologizing for something that other people might want you to apologize for. Doug Wilson uses the example all the time. You know, what do you need to do to get a garden full of weeds? Nothing. You just leave it alone. What do you need to do to have a messy house? Nothing. Just live in it. Every day we accumulate little messes, and one of the biggest mistakes I have made and I see others make is not to clean them up immediately. After a couple of weeks of this, all of a sudden we feel bad, we feel out of sorts, we feel out of fellowship with God, and we wonder how we got that way. Well, it's just time to weed the garden. It's time to confess and repent. A lot of times people don't know where to start confessing and repenting. So for fathers and men, here's a quick list. Sexual immorality this is an easy one. Usually if you aren't confessing regularly, you have something that's just glaringly obvious. Do you stare at girls you shouldn't on social media? Do you watch porn? Do you get angry? Do you provoke your kids? Do you get anxious? Do you speak harshly to your wife? Do you harbor bitterness towards someone at work? You can start with one that's impacting your relationships the most and ask God to reveal it to you blatantly when you are doing it. Every time it happens, as soon as you notice it happening, confess it to God. Most of the time that really helps anyway because you're bringing God into the equation. It's really hard to be sexually immoral when you know God has a front row seat to your thoughts. 
I'm just saying. It starts slow, but confess it. Pray for forgiveness. Even if you usually don't pray until the morning or evening, confess your sin and spend some time looking back at your day. Call it what God calls it. Not accidentally staring at bazoombas, but adultery. And acknowledge it in front of God. When you first start confessing and repenting and doing it regularly, it can look like you just stepped into a hoarder's house. It will seem like there are messes everywhere. It might seem overwhelming, but again, like one of my favorite pastors, Doug Wilson, says the best plan isn't to step away until you feel like you can tackle the whole thing. The best plan is to pick one thing up off the floor and throw it away. Don't sit in an action. Don't question it too much. Like 1 John says, if you say you do not have sin, you're deceiving yourself. Pick something. Start cleaning it up. If you make it a habit, many more things will start to come to mind. At first, I found it really exciting when I was confessing things, but there were times when I started to really feel down because some of the sins just kept popping up over and over again. Then one day, I simply asked my wife, like, have I gotten better at being angry? And she was like, yeah, way better. <laughs> I've realized that the goal isn't perfection here and now. We strive to cheerfully obey God's commands because they lead to life and we are hungry to glorify God. Lastly, there's a book called How to Be Free by Jim Wilson. It's life-changing. It's got practical steps for repentance, as well as the theology that Bible nerds love, packed into a really kind of short, accessible book. It was one of the singularly most impactful books I've read. I can't recommend it enough. If you have issues understanding how sin is impacting your life, it will show you how it is, and it also helps you apply the gospel in a practical way to start confessing that sin. So I really hope that you gave you something new and refreshing about, uh, new and refreshing to think about when it comes to confessing sin and repenting and how to implement it in your daily life. It's not the most fun or sexy thing to do every day, but it certainly has made a big diff uh, difference in my life and kind of helped me to see ways in which God can transform me when I give those things over to him. I'll be praying that God helps you and you're confessing, you're repenting, and uh, with that, I'll, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.